Hey everybody, Professor Davis here again from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And uh, today I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about uh, substituted cyclohexane rings. I'm also here to congratulate my friend Frank Wong, who's defeated me in our race to a thousand subscribers. So Frank, there's your there's your uh, T-shirt on my YouTube channel. Um, his uh, YouTube channel is Orgo Made Easy, and I do highly recommend that you check him out. Uh, he's got a different style than mine, but he's a very effective teacher. So uh, if you haven't looked at Frank's channel, by all means, go check it out. But for now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cis and trans positions in cyclohexane rings and how they affect conformational behavior. Uh, so we're going to focus on one, two uh, cis and trans substituted cyclohexanes. But first, I want to show you what I mean by cis and trans. And to do that, I want to take my darling model kit here. And we're all used to seeing this by now, I think, on my channel. I bring this out. There's always some red atoms and there's always some white atoms. And I'm trying to make a point with the locations that I've marked. And today's not any different. So today I'm going to take my chair compromer of cyclohexane and I'm going to do something you would never do in nature. And that is I'm going to flatten it completely. So I'm going to take my chair and I'm going to bend my headrest up and my footrest up until they're even with one another and try to maintain this long enough to tell you what I want to tell you. You can see how unstable this is, but even my model kit doesn't want to do it. So notice that all the red substituents are on one side of the ring and all my white substituents are on the other side of the ring. So we would say that these red substituents are all cis to one another, and that these white substituents are also all cis to one another. However, any red and white substituent would be called trans to one another. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change a few of these atoms out so that only two of them are marked, and those two are going to be on adjacent carbon atoms in the ring. So this one, two, disubstituted cyclohexane ring is something that you are guaranteed to see in your organic chemistry class. So here's a 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane. Now, let's take a look at the conformation one more time. So I flattened it. You can see clearly that the two substituents are cis to one another. So when I put my ring into a more realistic chair conformation, let's say this one, okay, you should be able to see very clearly. One is in the axial position and one is in the equatorial position. And of course ring flipping causes a complete interconversion between one and the other. So to ring flip this molecule like so puts one in the axial and the other one in the equatorial position. So my cis 1, 2, let's call these methyl groups let's say, 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane are going to be 50-50 one conformer and the other because I don't have any way that I can change this to place both of my substituents in an equatorial position. But in the case of 1,2 disubstituted molecules like this one, if I instead place my two substituents so that they are trans to one another, like so, let's flatten it again to confirm that. You can see very clearly they're in the trans conformation. I can put it in a chair in which I have both of those substituents in axial positions or ring flip to place both substituents in an equatorial position. So in the case of trans 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexanes we have a preponderance of this conformer and in fact very very little of this conformer because we have a choice between putting both substituents in axial positions or both in equatorial positions. So this trend continues around the ring with alternating carbons. So the next carbon over, the cis-trans relationship changes, of course, because now the cis are both axial. Right? So uh, build yourself a model, go around the ring. I don't want to go too far. I'm going to stick to the one, two disubstituted cyclohexanes for this video and uh, see if you can convince yourself that this is the case. That's it. Next time we'll do another disubstituted cyclohexane. We'll work our way around the ring. I'll see you then. I'm Professor Davis. And my friend is Frank Wong. See you guys next time.